Welcome to Electron Online. Our next example is similar to the previous one, but now we have an x squared in the denominator. We have the integral of the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by x squared. And again, since we recognize that we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, we're going to use this type of trick substitution, this kind of relationship between a and x. Here we can see that the sine of theta, by definition, is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse which is equal to x over a, which means that x can be written as a times the sine of theta. And we'll use this trick substitution in here to replace x. We also have a dx, and so therefore dx divided by d theta, dx d theta, is equal to a times the cosine of theta, and moving the d theta over here, we can now write dx as being equal to a times the cosine of theta times d theta. Now we have the two substitutions that we can make to turn this integral into something we can actually integrate. This is now equal to the integral of the square root of a squared minus a squared times the sine square of theta, since x is equal to a sine theta. And here in the denominator, we also get a squared times the sine square of theta. And dx can now be written as a times the cosine of theta times d theta. This a can cancel out one of these a's. Now let's factor out an a in the numerator. This now becomes equal to the integral of a times the square root of 1 minus the sine square of theta divided by a times the sine square of theta. And this is the cosine of theta times d theta. And now this a cancels out this a. Of course, 1 minus the sine squared theta is the cosine squared theta, and when we take the square root of that, we simply get the cosine of theta. This becomes equal to the integral of the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta d theta divided by the sine square of theta. Multiplying this together, this becomes equal to the integral of the cosine square of theta divided by the sine square of theta times d theta, and now it becomes an exercise in integrating this particular integral. The trick for that is to take the numerator and write it as follows. This is equal to the integral of 1 minus the sine square of theta times d theta divided by the sine square of theta. Now when we divide the denominator into the numerator, we can write this as follows. Coming up here for more room. This is equal to the integral of 1 divided by the sine square of theta is the cosecant square of theta. And the sine square of theta divided by the sine square of theta is simply 1 minus 1 times d theta. Now we have to know what the, cos the integral is of the cosecant square of theta. That is equal to, when we integrate, that's equal to minus the tangent of theta, and then if we integrate 1, we get minus theta. And of course, we get the constant of integration. At this point, now we can realize, if we look at our triangle, that the tangent of theta is the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent side. The so tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. In this case, that's equal to x divided by the square root of a squared minus x squared. We can then replace the tangent of theta by this. And also, theta, since we have the sine of theta equal to x over a, we can then say that the theta can be written as the arc sine, the inverse sine of x over a. Substituting this and this back into our equation, let's see what we get. This is equal to minus the tangent of theta, which is x divided by the square root of a squared minus x squared minus theta, which is the arc sine of x over a, plus a constant of integration. And that looks like it's the answer to what we're looking for. That's the integral of the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by x squared. Again, recognize that we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, which lends itself to this kind of relationship on the triangle. And that's how we solve an integral like this.